here's an example where the hard part is really reading through the problem and being able to parse it and figure out what you're looking for. Once I show you this one, the actual calculations are very straightforward. But I wanted to show it to you because there are ones similar on the homework. It looks an awful lot like the one we just did with the pyramid that we sliced across the z-axis and found the cross-sectional area of the squares that resulted. But this one's given to us in text form, so it's just hard to understand what it's saying without a nice picture for us. So it says, let R be the region in the first quadrant bounded by the coordinate axes and Y equals one minus X squared. Before we go on, let's just pause and draw that. So in the first quadrant, that means we're just drawing where X and Y are both positive. And then we have the function one minus X squared, which is a downward facing parabola with a Y intercept of one and also it turns out an x-intercept of one. So that's our region, that's R, and it's bounded by that curve and by the coordinate axes. So it's this right here. Bounded by the x-axis, the y-axis, and this curve y equals one minus x squared. Then it says a solid has that as its base, has base R, and cross sections through the solid perpendicular to the base and parallel to the y-axis are squares. Find the volume of the solid. So what we're saying is there's a picture that's coming up out of the board, but it's hard to visualize something like that, especially if it says the cross sections are squares. It's really hard to visualize what this looks like because it doesn't just come up in a straightforward way, there's this curve to the top of it. So it's really hard to visualize. But if you keep track of what it's saying, what it's saying is if you were to slice the thing perpendicular to the base, meaning if we're looking straight down on it, the slices are coming down straight from us onto this page, and then parallel to the y-axis. So we're slicing in this direction. So we cut slices like this, the slice that results as it comes up, if we were to tilt our head sideways and kind of rotate around this and look on from this side, what we would see is a square. So what that means is the area, the cross-sectional areas we're interested in are functions of x. How do we know that? If the cross-sections are cut parallel to the y-axis, that means they're cut across or perpendicular to the x-axis, which is where we end up with a delta x here. And we can cut these at different x values, meaning that area changes depending on x, so it's a function of x. Once you recognize that, we're still using the fact that volume is the integral of the area function, and since this is a function of x, we have area as a function of x dx. All we have to do is figure out what those areas are gonna be. We're told they're squares, so all we need to know is the length of one of the sides. Well, the length of one of the sides is gonna depend on this function right here. As x changes, as you slice this at different points, the length of that side, this side here, is going to depend on one minus x squared. And then of course the height of it will be the same because we're told it's a square. So the area function is just going to be the width squared. The width is just this function here. And with that we're pretty much done. So really the hard part is just reading through and having some sense of what this is saying, but it's pretty much the same setup as last time. As you slice this thing, you see squares at every point. And this one's actually easier because we don't have to figure out what the length of the base or height are. We're just told it's this function one minus x squared. So really, once you know what you're looking at, the actual work is much easier than the previous one. It's just that it's hard to read through and understand what this is saying. So in our case, this is going to be 
1 minus x squared squared, that's the area function. And then the limits of integration, well the x values at the extreme edges of this are x equals 0 on this edge and x equals 1 on this edge. That's as far as x goes on either side. So then you could multiply this out and get 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth. And then again, integrating is really straightforward, so I won't show the details of that. But what you should get is 8 over 15. And you can practice that and see if you end up with the same answer. So I wanted to show you that just so if you run into one on the homework that's similar to it, don't panic, just slow down and read it carefully. And if there's a complicated description like this, odds are it's really trying to give you everything you need in one place. And the actual work is going to be pretty straightforward as long as you can read through and understand it.